Good morning, my name is Matthew Johnson and I am the pastor here at Glencoe United Methodist Church and welcome back to another morning devotional. I'm glad that you are joining us this day as we are kicking off a new week um, with another devotional and also, let's face it, time is flying, isn't it? And every time you turn around, (laughs) a new week has come and another week has passed. And it's amazing how we take life for granted each and every day, how we kind of wish the day would be over, or we wish this week would be over, or whatever, or we wish work would be over today. And then all of a sudden, it is gone, and there's the week gone, and then there's the month, and then so on and so forth. I hope that you are doing well during this time, and that you are continuing to stay safe and healthy, and if there's anything you need, please contact me at the email below. I'm always here for you if you need me. Now, let us go ahead and start with our announcements for for today so that way you know what's going on in the life of this church so that way you can maybe participate or continue to take part. So, first off, this week, um, tomorrow, we have Fall for Jesus, which is the first GLOW event since the pandemic, and it's going to be done outside at the pavilion, and we are going to have a good time. We're going to have story time, we're going to have crafts, we're going to have painting pumpkin, and all sorts of stuff. So, it's going to be a lot of fun, and it's right beside the playground, so kids can have a chance to play. So I hope that you can bring your kids and so they can have a little bit of fun, especially since probably they've been cooped up more than normal. It'd be good to have them to have fun somewhere that is safe and that is going to be fulfilling and help them learn about who God is. Also, we have Trunk or Treat coming up, which is going to be on October 31st. We're going to have trunks all around our parking lot, and what we're going to do is we are going to have the candy either handed to the children or they're going to be put in treat bags to give to the children so that way they don't have to worry about cross-contamination when they are getting their candy. So I hope that you will be able to bring your children to that. We are going to serve hot dogs too, but what we're going to do is we're going to prepare the hot dogs ahead and we're going to wrap them so that way you don't have to worry about people, you know, breathing on your food and things like that. They're going to be wrapped and held and kept warm and um, we will be selling those and chips and drinks so that way you can take it with you after you are done trick-or-treating or or trunk or treating should I say here and so I hope that you will come and have fun and bring your kids so they can have fun and get lots of candy and not have to worry about this uh, contamination that we potentially have out there today in this day and age so I hope you'll join us then. It'll be taking place between 4 and 6 on October 31st. And then, of course, we have the Brunswick Stew coming up. And it's going to be on November 21st. And you can, you can go ahead and place your order anytime. Just either call me here at the church or call my cell phone if you know it. Or you can email me at the email that you saw earlier. And it's also going to be in the description, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, and... You can just order however many quarts you want. You know, we sell them by the quart, so you just give me your name and how many quarts you want, and then on the day that you come pick up your stew, you'll pay for it then. So please let us know if you want any. It's going to be delicious, as always, and you'll be picking up on the 21st during the day. We'll give you more information as it comes available about the price as well as the time frame in which it's going to be given out. Also remember that we are doing a fundraiser for the UMW that's called That's My Pan, and it is an opportunity to get some cookware, especially pans, personalized with your name or whatever you want to put on it, Um, and it'll be a good way of personalizing it to you or to your family. So that way you can say this is ours, not just something that you buy from the store, but it's actually our pan, or it's our cookware, or it's our kitchenware. And it it just makes it really special. And so um, I'm hoping that you will please take part in that. And you can either order it online through the link above, or you can call and do a paper order if you want to, and that'll be fine too. Either way, it'll be fine. 
But we lo do look forward to hearing from you about getting something from That's My Pan. And then also, if you've not done so already and you're a participant of purchasing items from Amazon, then uh, you can sign up for Amazon Smile, which is literally the same thing as Amazon. You don't need a Prime account for it. And what you do is you set up your charity of your choice to donate 0.5% of your purchases to that charity. It doesn't cost you any extra. It's taken out of the money that goes to Amazon. So when you make a purchase of, say, four items, the <clears throat> subtotal, which is prior to the taxes and shipping and all that, will be what the 0.5% comes out of. And it'll give it back to the charity of your choosing. Glencoe UMC is on there. So if you would like to give back to Glencoe UMC, no cost to you. And since you're already purchasing from Amazon, this would be a great opportunity to do so. And if you haven't done so already, please connect with us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram, and of course YouTube, where all of these videos are always made available every single time that they are recorded and edited. It is a opportunity for you to have access to these services and to these devotionals and other videos that are for kids and things like that. And so we hope and pray that you are able to connect with us and um, you can see on the screen here the information for that. And now, friends, let's go ahead and turn to Scripture today, which is going to be a very short verse, uh, two verses actually, but we're going to talk about something a little bit beyond that. So we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 11, the first two verses. And let's listen to what it has to say, shall we? Faith is the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. The elders in the past were approved because they showed faith. What's so interesting about this passage is that we're reading a passage from Hebrews, which is the New Testament. And it's an interesting it's an interesting read. I, I like Hebrews a lot. It's it's got a lot of good information in there for uh, faithfulness and discipleship and things like that. But what we're focusing on today is the first two verses of the 11th chapter, which is, it leads into, for the rest of the chapter, these different acts that come from these persons who have been considered like previous saints, or these elders as it refers to. So we oftentimes refer to people who have come and gone, who have done great things in the lives of the church as seasoned saints or saints that have left us. But, and this is not to be dis mistaken with saints of like Saint Mark or Saint uh, Francis or anything like that. This is not the same thing because, you know, we're not Catholic. And so we're not creating sainthood from people. But we look at them as saints in the life of the church because of the things that they have done, which is the same principle at its core. And what we, what I'm trying to get at here is that in Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about all these previous saints that came, and it's talking about all these elders, so to speak, is what the scripture says, such as Abraham, Enoch, and Joseph, and Jacob, and Isaac, and Moses, all of these different individuals, and about how they were faithful. It gave examples. And, and I like to look at this because it reminds me of these different things in my life that I have done wrong, and the different things that I would like to think that God is seeing that I am doing. So well, there's many ways that we can take this, right? We can take this and talk about faith itself. We can talk about the different acts that each of these individuals that are listed in this passage in the 11th chapter of Hebrews um, of what they did and the significance. But what I want to focus on today is a very simple thing, which is what we do for God is not forgotten. What we do for God is is important and what we do for God is a sign of our faithfulness. And what's so important here is when you reread re the first verse, let's go ahead and read it for you. Faith is the reality that we hope for, the reality of what we hope for, the proof of what we don't see. 
What's so interesting about this is that faith is not something that we can see. So faith, if we go back to Romans 8 or 2 Corinthians uh, 4, I believe is what it is, you'd see how Paul is talking about faith as something that you don't see. You can't see to believe. That's not what faith is. You can see and believe, but that's not the same thing as faith. It shouldn't even be defined in the same realm as faith. Faith is something that it's a reality that you want to take place. So if we have faith in God, we have faith that God is going to create a new reality or create a reality for us in the future or for the world in the future. Faith is something that we don't have all of the answers to. Faith is see, is going into the unknown or the mystery and hoping for the best outcome possible, or hoping for the most ideal outcome. So, I say all that to say this. Faith is something that we can embody each and every day in all that we do. And I I think that when we are living faithfully to God, when we are living as true disciples of Jesus Christ, we are faithful. We are performing acts of mercy, kindness, and love And also piety. And by piety, I mean worshiping God, prayer, participating in the sacraments, things like that. When we participate in these acts and works, what we are doing is we are exhibiting what we believe to be a reality that we are hoping for. So when we pray for someone to be healed, we are hoping for for that person to be healed. When we pray that this person be comforted by the Holy Spirit during their times of turmoil and tribulation, we are hope we are being faithful by putting that on God. We are saying that we want this reality to take place, not that it is taking place actively, not that we see it. The big thing is, is that when we perform actions in this world, when we perform good deeds, if you will, anybody can perform good deeds. But when we do perform these good deeds, when we do it out of faith, when we do it in light of a reality that we hope that will exist one day because of God and who God is, that is when we are exhibiting true faith because we are hoping for a certain reality to come. We are participating in this life so that God can participate with us and transform where we have been. Take the carbon footprint, so to speak, from us and turn it into something greater. What I love about this passage is it goes through and talks about what these saints, these long forgotten in some instances, but definitely long lost saints of the church have done. And it lists out the things that they did not because they saw and believed, but because they had faith in God and believed. Because they had faith in who God is, who God was, and what God is going to do in their lives as well as in the world. So when I go through my daily life, I am always trying, I am always making mistakes, but I'm always trying to do the best that I can. And I don't do it to brag. I don't do it out of boastfulness. I don't do it because I want others to see what I have done. I do it because I have faith in what God has in store for me and in store for this world. And I do it because I read it in Scripture, and Scripture tells me to serve those who are needing to be served a.k.a. the homeless, the hungry, the widows, the orphans, those who are suffering due to persecution, whether it's due to religion, ideologies, political stance, whether it's because of who they are as a person and they're not accepted or, or rejected. Because all of these things, all of these categories, all fall into a simple thing, which is human flaws human sinfulness. God transcends all of the different categories and subcategories and definitions and terms that we create in this world for each other to create division, to create separation, to create these different instances of who we are versus who they are. 
God is greater than all of that. And what we do matters. What we must do is continue to read Scripture and have God speak to us. We must be there for others who need us. It doesn't matter if we agree with who they are, agree with what they do in life. It doesn't matter about all of that. We just must be there for one another because we are humanity. We are all created in the image of God. Who are we to say one is better than the other? Who are we to say one is right and who is wrong? Who are we to do any of that? Because that is God's role, not ours. Truly God's role. So when I read this scripture, when I examine my daily life, I think about, am I being faithful to God? Am I doing what I believe is to be hoped for? a new reality, what that reality would look like? Am I contributing to that? Because as disciples of Jesus, we are contributing because God uses us as instruments of peace. God uses us as instruments on this world to do things, just as God did with Jesus, the disciples, the prophets, and then the early church. We today are still doing things in the world on God's behalf. We are performing acts on God's behalf, and it is our responsibility to do that. So I hope that you leave this message today with the hope of a reality to come, a hope with a reality where God is ever-present, ever-loving, and fills you with mercy and love to share with this world. Go in peace, friends. Serve the Lord always and always give thanks and glory to God. Amen. Amen.